Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Bergeron Briefs. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is uh, Art Bergeron. Uh, I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. There are 60 of us there. I do nothing but elder law. Um, I, did the, I do these shows to kind of supplement the presentations that I often do with the Council on Aging, talking about particular elder law issues. And even there, I try to use those as a way of getting you to know people that you need to know as a senior. But that's what I try to do also through this show. And one of the people that you need to know, if you're living around here, Marlboro Huts in this area, is Denise Butler, who has been kind of Denise Jones. I'm doing that all the time. I don't even know her. I don't even know this person. Denise Jones, who was kind enough to remind me of her name and to come to the show to talk about the fact that she is the executive director uh, at Christopher Heights. Many of you know, have driven by Christopher Heights uh, in Marlboro. Many of you know that it's an assisted living community, but you may not have been inside. I bet you haven't met Denise Jones. So Denise, before we start, what's your name again? Before we start, Tell us kind of how you ended up there. How did you end up at Christopher Heights? Are you from around here? Did you do other stuff? How did you, how did you end up there? Uh, prior to working at Christopher prior to work, Heights, yeah. prior to I'm an Heights. RN, oh. a bachelor's yeah. prepared nurse. Yeah. I worked in Boston Hospital and Management, yeah. and I did a lot of cognitive exams in the past with oh. uh, a one-on-one -on -one training closely yeah. with physicians, yeah. moved out this way, Yep. Started doing home care, mm -hmm. started going into assisted livings because I was getting calls to get consultations on cognitive exams, kind of memory, things like that. As a result of the home care work. Yeah. Uh, through yeah. that. Or through yeah. that. Yeah. Through the yeah. home care work and then fell in love with assisted living and truth be told, fell in love with Christopher Heights. I was, uh, had a great impression with the people that worked there, the company as a whole. Oh, because you kind of bump into them from going the work in that you were doing. Yep. I see. Kept going in and I out see. and uh, wanted to a home base. I wanted to get out of home care. Yeah, and so was Christopher Heights the first assisted living community or group that you started working with? No, I had yeah. many locations that I would go in. But as a full-time employee, when you when you moved to Christopher, was that the first place first that you went time, to was, first was Christopher, Christopher Heights? Christopher And you've yes. been there now for, for a Three while? years. For three years. A little over three years. And so can you tell us a little bit about Christopher Heights? Because as, as we were discussing earlier, there are a lot of assisted living communities, but Christopher Heights has some unique things about it that people wouldn't necessarily know. So just kind of, just kind of talk about Christopher Heights and what they're trying to do, the way they're structured. Yep, Christopher Heights has been in business at least 15 years or more at this point, might even yeah. be 20. Yeah, and they're there's kind of five. they're kind of locally owned, right? It seems to me there's some the people from Worcester that started these, or people from Worcester's, this area. Worcester's the original location. I see. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. so we have five locations. Plus, we manage Haywood, Wakefield, and Gardner, mm -hmm. but we don't own the building. Uh, I see. Christopher Heights is unique in that uh, multiple levels of income are welcome to apply and to move in. Um, the other feature that I love about Christopher Heights is that we have one, if you come in and you pay market, you're not going to get surprised for additional charges as your need for services goes up, which it, I think is also unique to us. It's, it's, it, I've seen a lot of assisted livings, and yeah. it was a big surprise when I found out that that's how that works. So can you talk a little bit about you know, why this is? How, why is it that this, this thing operates a little different? I think one of the things that we had talked a little bit about was that, there, that the, a lot of these are built with, with, through, the, through the federal tax credit Correct. Yep. program. Which is how we have the different levels of income. So the owner pretty much I figured out that there was a need mm -hmm. for seniors to go into assisted living, mm -hmm. and that not everybody had you know, lots of money and assets to live off of in yep. assisted living. Yep. And he came up with the idea and had the concept and it's been a huge success. It's, you know, there's a huge demand. I have a wait list all the time, mm -hmm. especially for tax credit units. And when you say a tax credit union, mm -hmm. are, the, are the units, first of all, just let's talk about the one in Marlboro. So how many, how many um, apartments are there in Marlboro? We have 83 apartments. And there, are they all uh, doubles or all singles or you know, how yeah. does that work? No, we have 12 one bedroom apartments yeah. and the remainder are what we call studios or yeah. our large studios which have a large alcove area in it. I see. And they almost, when you set them up, it's like two rooms. I see. We I don't see. allow anybody to share so we would never put two people who don't know each other in the same apartment. Even if it's a one bedroom, we would not do that. I see. So, and, and so out of those units, you said there's a certain number of units that are so-called tax credit units. Are those designated apartments within the building or do those kind of move around depending on kind of 
whether there's a tax credit or an or a income eligible person who lives in that unit? They move around yeah. because based on the income eligibility at the time, 60% yeah. of our units are tax credit. 60%? 60%. And if they, if you are, if you are moving into a tax credit union, how do, what is, what is different about that in terms of? Well, it can't be in terms of the unit because you said the unit's kind of. Correct. It can be any unit. Could right? be any of the units. But yeah. what is different about that in terms of the person who is moving in? Well, depending on how much assets they have and yeah. if they qualify for which low income program. Yeah. They move in. It becomes income based. So the, they get all the services and everything the same as someone else who pays privately. Yeah. Theirs is just income based. They'd have nowhere else to go if we didn't have that. I see. And, and so we have 60% because people that move in and they run out of money, yeah. we guarantee that they stay. How could I guarantee that they stay? 60%, I can guarantee that they stay. I see, because there's enough units that Correct. are around. There's enough. So, so if a person comes in and, and they are needing, on, on, on say, private pay, and they are, ne but they are needing to use some of their own money to supplement their income because usually, that's the truth, right? And pretty much in all assisted livings, you can't pay for the unit just on your own income because it's too high because you're providing a lot of services, right? But you're telling me if if they run out of their money, right? At that point, there are, there is a program through which they can they will continue to stay there. But you said it's income based. And what what, what does that mean? So we, we always ask, so how, the, yeah. how it works, and people are always surprised by this. Um, they, they want confirmation, they want to talk to other families, it's too good to be true, we hear this all the time. It's too good to be true, I, that's I what I want to hear. All yeah. the time, yeah. yeah. So we ask that they give us three months, three to four months warning that they're gonna be running out of their funds, their mm -hmm. assets, mm -hmm. and let me know. And then I start working on the Mass Health application, which can be very trying and lengthy. I do those. Yeah. I know that feeling. Yeah. Right? And it's costly <laughs> elsewhere, but I, there's no charge for me to do that. I was just going to and say, by, and by the way, you're doing the Mass Health application Correct. for them at, the, at that point, yeah. right? And now you're doing a Mass Health application. Why? I mean, you're not a skilled nursing facility, so you're not going to ever get paid by Mass Health as a skilled nursing facility, no, right? No, we wouldn't do the long term application. Right. So we go for the group adult foster care application. Group adult foster care. Can you talk a little bit about yep. what that means? So, group adult foster care is anybody over 65 mm -hmm. can receive extra services and a spend down for the services where they live. Mm -hmm. So we, I do the application. They're, a lot of the times they're over the income limit of 1290. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But when I, I submit the application, I'll end up with a spend down based on their income through Mass Health, which is the few. The frail elder waiver. Yeah, but they yeah. they skill in because they need services from us. They skill in. So I'm gonna, so, so so we're gonna kind of let's go, let's talk through some of those yeah. some of those terms. So let's say, I'll give you an. So I'm gonna make a pretend. You know my couple Frank and Mary. You've seen them on I TV, have. right? Right. Yeah. And they want to live in their house until they die, and then they want to be died and be buried in the backyard. And then when the two of them are dead, they're gonna leave their assets to their kids. But now, say they are at that point where they can't like safely live at home. Right, just because one of them has got a need for services or whatever. So now they're going to come. They're coming to you, right? As of and, and say they've got hundred thousand dollars in the bank, okay? And their income is total between the two of them two thousand dollars a month, okay? They're both on social security, right? This might be a small pension, so it's two thousand dollars a month. So the, and so first of all, they come to you because they kind of can't manage it at home, right? So what? What things are you providing to them that makes it safer for them to be where you are than for them to be at home? What kinds of things? We offer all the same things that other assisted livings offer, yeah. and that it gets included for everybody, yeah. and they can pick and choose from the following services. So I see. we provide, everybody gets three meals. Obviously, there's no picking and choosing. They get the three meals a day. Right. All the entertainment and activities. Yeah. Socialization. Yeah. Medication. Supervision. I call it the self uh, administration medication management. So CNAs and companions, home health aides come in yep. and hand them the medications at the right time of day and I watch say. them take it. So they don't have to figure out that they're doing it at the right time, yep. but they do have to take the pills. You're Correct. not in. The, you're not providing a nurse who is actually going to be able to administer medication. Correct. But we that's can, required across all all assisted living. Yes, so, right? it is. There's actually a regulation prohibiting assisted livings from providing that service. From a nurse. From a nurse. From a nurse, because right. then they would be dispensing. Right, as opposed so, to just kind of supervising. Supervising. I see. And the, the key there, and I always 
advise anybody that comes into Christopher Heights yeah. shopping yeah. is to make sure that they're actually watching them take the medicine. Because if a companion or a home health aide walks away, gives them the medicine, and doesn't watch the senior or the person there taking the medicine, there's no point in really being there. So that's right. a question I, I make sure they always ask, is that, is that being followed through? Right. So the medications, and then we have you know th up to three safety checks a night. And we often recommend that, especially if someone moves from home to us, because yeah. it's a whole new environment. Yeah. And if it's dark and they're getting up at night and they're not sure what their surroundings are and they happen to fall, Right. Someone can just check to make sure they're okay. They're not going to wake them up if they're sleeping. They're not going to flash a light in their face. They're not going to slam the door behind them. But they're just to make check. sure that they're safe. Close just the door quietly, right where they need to be, as they're getting used to it. And they can have those as long as they want. Uh, they I get see. up to one and a half hours of care with activities of daily living, which is the bathing, the dressing, and the grooming, yeah. shaving, things like that. Yeah. And then any, the, any, would you, any assistance with toileting if they have any toileting yep, issues? Absolutely. While wow, you're doing all the activities of daily living. Then. Yes. And once again, for folks who are listening to us, you know, for, while, while we think about the fact that we need some assistance with that, and therefore we need 24-7 care, you don't need like ass assistance 24-7 to get dressed, right? Or to eat, you know, when you, when you actually kind of think about the things that you need, it may very well be that these people are in a position with, where for that amount of care, they can handle it. They can. Now, what if they what if they need more than that? What if they need more care than that? Can they buy that additional care from you? Can they can they buy it from a, an outside care agency? We would help you know make recommendations based yeah. on that. Yeah. And how much care they needed. Yeah. Um, they can have someone around the clock if they're able to afford that. If that's yeah. what they feel they need, and they can do that, they ob absolutely they can do it. I see. And if in, if that were the situation, do they need to be getting that care from you, or can they actually hire a third party to kind of come in and help out? Well, if it's if it's beyond our capacity, yeah. and, and they don't need to be in a nursing home, and they just need extra care like that, and yeah. they can afford it, they can hire somebody. I see. Yes. I see. So it, yeah. Frank and Mary can be even if they're pretty frail. Right, they can be moving to your place, and you can be kind of taking care of the issues that they need to have taken care of, because you're really providing. So you're providing meals, you're providing those kinds of checks, you're dealing with the med issues, and you're and you're also providing the assistance if they need it with the with activities of daily living. Right? Absolutely, yep. So now, but but they're only making two thousand dollars a month, and I would bet that you're charged more than two thousand dollars a month for yes. a couple who is living in in one unit. So now they're going to be needing some of their cash, right, to spend, spending that down to supplement their income to pay you, okay? So now go back to where you were when we were, when we were talking. So they need to tell, first of all, do you want a commitment up front when they show up? I bet, I bet you're doing all this math kind of up front, you know, that, that the amount of cash they're bringing with them is going to be enough to last for some period of time. We do like a commit. So if someone comes yeah. in and they show us what they have, yeah. and if they came to me, you know, say they need a hundred thousand dollars, and they came three months later and said it's all gone. Well, that's different. Yeah, that's different. Right. We, we, get, we do, get that. Right, yeah. but I mean, that's generally I think the question that comes up the most with the applications because once they f understand that I'm going to do the Mass Health, and this is a great program, I think the next thing they're thinking is, let me give my money away because I can stay here on this. Right. And I think that's a, I understand it's a natural. Process. I can't right. say that I, I probably might have thought that as myself if I yeah. aged and didn't know. Yeah. But there is a look back on the tax credit in assisted living. I see. And if you you know get rid of funds and things like that quickly, then you know you're going to have a problem. So correct. so when you're talking to them about that initial commitment, is there a period of time that you're expecting that they're going to be able to say yes, we I can maintain myself on private pay for some period of time, for a year or I, for a two year, years? A year is nice. A year is nice. A year it's is helpful nice. to us. A year to two is helpful. Okay. You know, I feel that marketing-wise, I know that the area knows that we're, ta a lot of people know that we're tax credit. Yeah. I'm amazed. I think they forget that we have the private pay. And, you know, I, I've had people move in with, you know, six months worth of savings. I see. Because they have nowhere else to go or they're running out of being able to take care of themselves at home. I see. So that's what I love most about Christopher Heights, but I don't always have those opportunities. Right, because you may not have that kind of availability. Correct. Okay. Correct. So within three months of the point at which they think they're going to be out and no longer able to supplement their money, they want to talk to you and you're going to get them to qualify through something called group, group adult foster care. Right? Yes. And you told me that they could qualify for group adult foster care. And, and, and first of all, once they've qualified for that, what does that give them? 
what does group adult foster care do? It, it, does it allow them to be kind of in the same position that they were in terms of the services that are being provided? Yeah, they don't, they, a lot, oftentimes the families will help with that application. Yeah. The resident isn't even involved and they don't even right. know it, that it happened. And you're the one that so, does the application. Yes. So you're not telling them you've got to go hire your lawyer and spend thousands of dollars. This always hurts me. It hurts me that you're saying that. You don't, <laughs> you're not going to hire the lawyer. Right? So, so you, you, because you're going to do this mass health application in order to yep. get them qualified for group adult foster care, not for long-term care benefit, Correct. not for nursing home, but for group adult foster care. Yes. Okay. And once they've qualified for that, at that point, Frank and Mary, who are making $2,000 a month, right? Um, w w how much are they going to need to be paying you every month? It would be based on their income. So, it is, so what is it, a take, percentage of their income? So how, we take their work? income yeah. and we subtract. They get to keep $75 each for yeah. personal needs. Yeah. And we subtract the, the Medicaid payment of one hundred four ninety. dollars yeah. If they wanted to keep their Blue Cross Blue Shield or their Tufts yeah. as a supplemental insurance, yeah. you know, a variety of insurances, they show me that how much that costs a month and we deduct the insurance. I it see. is duplicity, so there's no need, but I would never make someone get rid of it if they feel comfortable with it. I understand. And I understand. so we deduct those amounts. Mm -hmm. The balance of the 2000 what's the remainder after those deductions, mm -hmm. becomes their rent and services. I see. It's and that it's, simple. And it's rent and service. And so it's sounding like they're keeping order of magnitude a couple hundred dollars or two, between two and three hundred dollars a month. They're paying the rest to you as rent, but it's not rent like in an apartment because you're providing the meal, you're providing everything in return for that rent, right? Correct. In return for that amount. And at that point, if after that, they get older, right, and get more frail and need more services, does that, do those services just kind of show up in return for that same amount of, same amount of rent so that they don't, they don't have to worry about if they get a little bit more frail, they need a little more time? They can have all the services they want at Christopher Heights. It's, we do individual service plans when they come in, yeah. and so they can pick and choose. And I always, what I tell families is, take everything. There's because we're not we're not going to upcharge you for it. Right. And if you take everything, then you're going to know what we have to offer. Yeah. And you can design what you need. And as you move along, whether sometimes they get sick and they have pneumonia and they come back weak, we increase their services for a month. They get stronger. They decide, okay, I want less services. We, yeah. There's no worry it about changes. a financial change for any income package. That is, that is simply amazing. So, so tell me about, without using names of course, tell me about some of the folks that you've got there because I'm sure that these kinds of questions have come up a lot and that you've got a kind of a range of people. Tell me about kind of who's there or if you can give us any examples of for, people For who, residents or staff? For residents. Well, yeah. step back. Tell us about the staff that's there. So who is there? You've got 83, you said 83 apartments? 83 apartments. 83 apartments, yeah. and, and, and who's there on a typical day? Well, there's staff? an ex executive chef and the cooks. Yeah, there's you. Right? There's me. There's you. There's okay. me, um, the executive director is me. Yeah. Yeah. I ha we have a nurse, a resident care uh, manager, we call them. Yeah. She's there during the day. We have a nurse on the weekends as well. So that's just kind of a backup because once again they're not there doing med management, right? But they're like a, they're they like oversee. A, they're overseeing. They're they, doing like they, case management. Yeah, yeah, they oversee the CNAs, the certified yeah. nurse assistants, and the home health aides. Mm -hmm. And the summer, you, your staff is certified nurse assistants. They, and and home health and aides. Yeah, they have to I be see. certified either one. We have a social worker there as well, a part time mm -hmm. social worker, mm -hmm. an activities director, and activities assistants, um, housekeepers because that's included as well. They include they clean your apartment once a week. Yeah. Do your yeah. laundry for you once a week. They make your bed for you? Make your bed daily. Empty Come on, they make your bed daily? daily. I, that was a joke line. They, no, yeah. ma make your bed daily and empty your trash daily. See, I could use this. Twice now. a day. I could use this now. <laughs> I hate making my bed. I never like making my bed. No, so they really do yes, everything. Yeah. Yes, That's yes, yes. That's all good. That's all good. Yes. It's fun to watch when someone comes to move in because they'll, they want to... I understand that they're transitioning and leaving behind things you do at home for yourself. And so they want to do Making your bed and... Right laundry and they say, well, I'm going to still do my laundry because that's the other thing. A lot of assisted livings have pay machines for the laundry. You have to put quarters. Ours is not. So there's relief there as well. But, you right. know, they'll say, you know, yes, I'm going to make my bed. I'm going to do my laundry. I don't want that. And after yeah. about a month, they figure out this is a great this thing. What a, am I thinking? What am I doing? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm, I'm supposed to be retired here. <laughs> exactly. Right. I wanted to retire from these things a long time <laughs> right. ago. Right. right. That's and, then, good. and the same for the family members. They're yeah. like, well, we'll come and do the laundry. We'll pick up the laundry. And then they figure out 
you know, that we don't group the laundry together. You don't have right. to write your name on the clothes. And they're like, right. oh, my God, you can, well, this is giving us relief. So. This, this is great. <laughs> this know? is great. So, so, so now tell me about the people. Tell me about some of the people who are there. One thing I'm curious about, I don't know if you'd have a sense of this, but are a lot of the folks who are there from Marlboro? Because I remember when, this, when I first... I represented somebody that did the big assisted living in for first one in Marlboro, the, um, the, the, the New Horizons. Okay. New Horizons. And I remember going to the city council because we were talking about it and, and to need to get the permits. And I said, I, I'm, you know, we're figuring that this is going to be mostly Marlboro people, right? And then I go there 10 years later and it turns out it's not because a lot of the people who are there are people who weren't from Marlboro, but they've got family now in Marlboro. And so they're moving because... They know they can't be at home by themselves, especially if it's like 500 miles away. They really don't want to live with their daughter, you know, and it's vice versa. I mean, you know, you love, you love your mother, but not necessarily in the next bedroom, you know. So they want that independence, but they want the proximity if there's trouble, you know. They want to know that somebody can come over and that's, you know. So what, what is it at Christopher, at Christopher Heights? Is it mostly people from right around here or is it really spread out or is there any kind of a, because you've, you've seen it over three years now. I, I'd say it's, you know, about 25 to 35 percent they're local, meaning Marlboro, Hudson, Northboro, Southboro. That's small. Yeah, 25 to 35 yeah. percent. And then the rest do come from further away in Massachusetts or because of a family member. Yeah. You know, they'll call and say, you know, uh, considering the three kids are in Massachusetts, my mother's in Connecticut, you're smack dab in the middle of all three of us. We can drive right by. You know, you're right near right. 495. It's great oh, that's for us. true too. The very for yeah. the se very same reason that so many businesses are locating in Marlboro because yeah. you've got this 20 minute commute time gives you a huge number of employees. So similarly, gives you a huge number of kids, right, who can go see mom exactly. just by driving exactly. to your location. So they're really so. all over the map. So that so beyond that, tell me go, once again, just give me some kind of stories about people who have moved in, especially ones who are kind of skeptical, right, but who have kind of over time kind of acclimated and. Any stories? Well, I, I think my favorite story is about Helen. She just won the award with Mass Alpha. Mass, Mass Alpha is a professional organization that if you work in assisted living, mm -hmm. you, you kind of go to all their meetings, you're a member of the organization yep. to continue to maintain your professionalism. Yep. You know, kind of like where you ha when, if you have a nursing license, there's an agency that you associate with. Yep. Right. So Mass Alpha. Mass Alpha has a huge um, awards dinner every summer, in the spring actually. For practicing nurses? Nope, all assisted living staff. Oh, for all assisted all living so staff. Mass Alpha, so like the Board of Nursing, yep. that's your professional organization, Mass Alpha is the professional organization for assisted living. And they host this huge event, and it was in Randolph this year. And yep. part of the event is nominating employees um, for you know their work and things that you've seen, or a resident. Yep. Well, or one a of resident? My, or a resident, and they call it the Resident Spirit Award. So one of my residents I saw as a nurse before I even worked there. And she was probably 92, 3 at the time. Yeah. You know, big personality, Italian woman who raised her children single. Why is it that so often the big personalities are Italian women? I think like, it's true. This, <laughs> I very seldom hear that French Canadian old ladies describe that way. <laughs> you know, it's really true, <laughs> though. I have Italian to say, my women. Italian women in Christopher Heights let me know exactly big. what they need. Exactly. At right. all times. At all and times. I, I like they that. They tell their kids the same thing, right? Yes, exactly. And their husbands. Well, there's no doubting them. Right. This, you know exactly <laughs> where they're coming from. Yes. You can't. You don't have to look behind your shoulder. No, you know? no, no. <laughs> you know exactly. That's right. So she came into Christopher Heights, and she has um, one eye her whole life mm -hmm. of vision. One eye. Raised her four children in a housekeeping department at UMass. And when they were little, they were discriminated against against the whole family quite a bit because there was only her. She left her husband, which is unusual to I do. Yeah. yeah, So they would often then. have to and move then. around at night from apartment to apartment because when they figured out she didn't have a husband, they'd evict her. They, oh. And so I think she made $2 an hour. Then she, when she retired, she went into modeling and she would do the senior circuit. She's got a ton of trophies in her room. She so do modeling? She did in her 70s and has all these photo shoots of her. So she's someone, to me, her spirit and her strength and her determination really in her lifetime proves itself at assisted living because it's not easy aging. And, and I can uh, put no. myself in their shoes all the time and I can understand what it is to get through a day. And that's what they're there for. Yeah, and we keep through them, a day. And we keep them safe 
and being able to enjoy their families still and keep going. And Helen's a prime example because... How old is Helen now? She's 100. <laughs> she's and, 100. and why I highlight her, her is because not only who she is in assisted living, it, her prior life brought her there, yeah. but she broke her hip. She broke her hip three years ago. And that's just a... Two years I always ago. tell, you know, that's like... There's right. There's only going right. one way you go. When you, I always tell them, don't ever want. You don't, that's why you want to go to assisted living. Twenty five. Because you're reducing the chances yep. that you're breaking your hip. I heard a statistic once of a twenty five percent survival rate once you break your hip. Once you've broken your hip. Because there's so many other issues that happen that kill yeah. you. Yeah. So at ninety seven, when she broke her hip, yeah. everybody gave up on Helen. So yeah, that's it. This is the end of Helen. And I said, no way. That's not the end of Helen. So I go down to rehab, it's something we do in assisted living as well. When our residents go into rehabs, we follow through and make sure that they know. You go see them. We do. We go see them and we make sure they know yeah. what our residents are doing, that they're yeah. the, the, the types of activities they can handle so right. we can get them back to baseline. So I go to this meeting, they all wrote her off pretty much because the of her age. The folks in the rehab? Yeah, because of her age, the insurance company, people came, everybody came. I said, no, 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 no. You can't do this to Helen. I said, I just watched Helen in physical therapy watch 20 feet. She just broke her hip. Within two weeks, she was demanding all her clothes and jewelry be brought down. And so they knew. <laughs> <laughs> this, this was into the rehab. Yeah, in the rehab. And, and so her daughters called and said, Denise, oh my God, you're so right. She's got all her clothes and jewelry. She's demanding us. We're, driving, she's, we're running it back and forth. She came back to Christopher Heights. When she came back, she ordered her daughters to take her out and buy her a red wa walker. She wants a shiny a new- A red walker. She's got this beautiful, shiny red walker. That was two years ago. She walks with the walker. She's still sharp as a tack. So I just kind of told her life story for the Mass Alpha dinner. Yeah. And 18 residents got nominated and Helen won. And Helen and There were 700 people there. You know, and so every day when I look at Helen, and, and she was not a woman with a lot of means. Right. And her family is supportive and loving. And we were there for her. Had that happened at home. Forget it. Had Game that was happened, over. She has so much still to give. She had a 100th birthday party, and her son-in-law is in a band. And they came to Christopher Heights. Yeah. And they had her stand up and sing chorus. <laughs> and and, and <laughs> they did that song, Charlie Brown. Yeah, yeah, Why yeah. is everybody picking on me? Is yeah, that her yeah, chorus? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, this is, I'll never forget it. And she just every day inspires me. And to me, she's the essence of why assisted living works. And she's the essence of why Christopher Heights works. Because she wouldn't be in assisted living if we didn't have the tax credit program. Denise, I wanted you to come on the show because I wanted people to get a sense through you of what this place is like. You have given a wonderful sense of what this place is like. So, you know, you should go see this place, right? If you're nervous about considering something, you should go see this place. She's going to be there. She changed her name on me from Denise <laughs> Butler to Denise Jones, but she's, <laughs> Denise Jones is going to be there, and you can kind of get a sense of this place. And, and if you're worried, if, like most of my people are, they're like, oh, what if I run out of money? I don't want to be on the street. So th here's, a, here's a place that you can actually talk that out with them. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, thanks a million, Denise, for coming on the show. And we'll see you on the next uh, installment of Bridge Run Briefs. Thank you.